Welcome to your weekly UAS news update. And this is the week of November 23rd, 2020, which is Thanksgiving week. So uh, I know you're going to watch this on the day after Thanksgiving, but uh, happy Thanksgiving. I hope you had a good time and uh, there's a lot to be thankful for. So appreciate all of you watching every single week. And uh, this week I got four topics I want to talk about. And actually, not all of those are very joyful, but uh, I should I should call this the, the yin and yang uh, news update because I'm going to try to counteract the bad stuff with some of the good stuff. Also, I should call it the uh, don't be a jackass uh, episode. So the first one is a guy that was arrested by the FBI for hitting an LAPD helicopter. A ton of you have sent me the link. It happened the day after I recorded the previous news update. So uh, it's a week old now, but I thought I would go over some of the information that we found out. Um, another one to shake your head, there was a, a man in Pennsylvania that was jailed after some bizarre drone bomb attack on his ex-girlfriend's house. So we'll talk about that as well. And then we'll roll into the drones for good uh, scenarios. I have two different things I want to talk about. Uh, using drones in Chernobyl uh, to do some good stuff. And then also using drones for bridge inspection, uh, an actual real life case scenario. And then I'll give you some news about Pilot Institute. So let's get to it. All right, the first thing this week, let's talk about this uh, person in LA, in Hollywood actually, that was arrested this week or last week, late last week for crashing their drone into an LAPD helicopter in September of 2020. Uh, this happened in September of 2020. The arrest actually happened last Friday. So it took a while for the investigation to go through. And I kind of want to go through actually quite a bit of detail. I found the document that uh, the FBI had put out to ask for the arrest of this person. But the story is an LAPD helicopter was assisting uh, uh, cops on the ground for burglary burglary of a pharmacy in Hollywood that was at night around midnight and the helicopter was flying and the pilot said that they saw a drone flying underneath them and they tried to climb up so that they wouldn't get hit by the drone and the drone ended up hitting them anyway and the helicopter made an emergency landing not on the spot but they went back and then basically landed and then they observed some damage on the helicopter there was a nose uh, damage there was an antenna damage and then some damage to the cowling as well the the police went out and searched the area and they found a car that was actually damaged. It looked like the, the broken windshield in the back was actually broken by the drone falling and hitting the uh, and hitting the car. The officers recovered the drone and they were able to locate a serial number. And then they interviewed people in the area and a bunch of people said, well, yeah, this there's some people flying drones from this house on a regular basis. So they issued a warrant. Uh, it took about 12 days, interestingly, to get the warrant to look at the content of the SD card, which was in the drone. And what they found is they found a bunch of pictures of the, the drone owner flying with the controller in their hand. And, um, and a few of the pictures were actually showing either their house uh, where they lived or actually showing them right next to a car that was registered to their name. So the, the, the police was able to identify the person and uh, by using the, the number on the, the license plate. And uh, they also, the pictures showed uh, pictures of the area actually where the accident happened. So pictures of the pharmacy in the area. The controller from what it looks like from the pictures is from the original Mavic Pro, not the, uh, the Mavic 2, but the original Mavic Pro. It's the black controller uh, that kind of uh, looks like the Mavic 2, but the Mavic 2 is actually a gray color. I don't have the Mavic Pro anymore. I sold my one, mine a while back, but it looked like that's what it was from the picture. Uh, the police obtained a warrant to search the house, which took another uh, 15 days. So this is a month later uh, in the middle of October, they were able to get a warrant and then they actually talked to the, the, the pilot and asked him a bunch of questions. And he basically confessed to flying the drone and uh, he wanted to go see what was going on. He heard a uh, chopper and he heard uh, just the, the police sirens going on. So he decided he was going to fly the drone. And he said that it was actually hard to see because it was at night. Duh. And um, he looked down at the controller for a few seconds. And by the time he did that, he saw the drones when he looked up. He saw the drone hitting the helicopter and, uh, and then falling down on the ground. So he kind of waited a little bit, went out apparently to go find the drone, but couldn't find it. I'm, I'm guessing the police found it before he did. And then um, the FBI requested uh, that this person be arrested. So they arrested him on Thursday of last week. And now he faces, uh, he faces fines and going to jail for up to a year. 
Uh, I tried to find the status because this happened several days ago. He was supposed to be in front of a judge the following day. I tried to find information about what happened and if he was actually sentenced to anything, but I couldn't really find inf information. So if you do have more information about actually what happened, then, um, then, then please leave it down there. Uh, the FBI is filing charges under Title 18 and um, there is a, 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 a rule, a, a law, I should say, in there that says that um, flying a, a UAS for and, the, and have, I'm going to read you the text, it's a little easier. It says it criminalizes the reckless interference and disruption and or disruption of the operation of an aircraft while operating an unmanned aircraft where the action poses an imminent safety hazard to the manned aircraft or its occupants, which obviously this falls under. So the FBI agent that submitted the paperwork basically said there is uh, reasonable proof right here that this happened, so they decided to arrest him. So we'll see what comes out of it. Um, it was only a matter of time. It, it feels like uh, this is actually the first time that there is this kind of a follow-up by the FBI and by the Department of Justice and, uh, and actually arresting someone based on these charges right here. So um, I'm sure there will be more to come, but um, bottom line is fly safely. If you hear a helicopter, don't go and take a look with your drone. Stay on the ground. If you hear a helicopter, it means that you're grounded. You're not flying. So obviously, uh, I think I'm, I'm preaching to the choir because uh, most of you guys have been really reasonable in your comments. I'm sure uh, you understand what's at stake right here. So we'll see what happens. Another bizarre story related to drone. And this one, actually, I reported about a uh, couple months ago, I want to say, maybe even longer than that. Um, a guy in Pennsylvania was arrested in late September and he was convicted to, uh, sentenced to five years in jail for, amongst other things, dropping explosives or bombs with his drone on his ex-girlfriend's house. And you're probably shaking your head right now like I did when I read all the stuff. Uh, he pleaded guilty to possession of uh, homemade bombs and firearms. Now you're going to say firearms are not illegal. They're not, but he was under uh, some kind of a program uh, where he wasn't allowed to have firearms. I don't remember the, the exact term. Uh, they also recovered a DJI Phantom 3 uh, that was apparently used to drop bombs on his ex-girlfriend's house or near his ex-girlfriend's house, I should say. Uh, apparently, there are videos that were recorded by the, uh, the landlord of the ex-girlfriend that shows basically an explosion in the street and nothing around, no one around. And so they're thinking that the bombs were dropped by the drone. The problem is apparently they didn't have enough of a proof to show that. So uh, he was convicted for owning all of this stuff and then he was uh, sentenced because he was flying, amongst other things, an unregistered drone. So that's the one thing that they were able to get him, uh, get him on. So just super bizarre to me. Um, just again, don't be that guy. Uh, just fly reasonably. Don't use your drone for, well, don't use your drone for stupid stuff like that. Okay, enough of the bad stuff. I want to move on to the good stuff. Uh, this is a cool story that was uh, reported in Drone Life, and this is drones being used at Chernobyl. So back in 1986, when the reactor exploded in Chernobyl, there was a, a block in construction. The fifth block was still under construction, and it was supposed to receive a depleted uranium. And, um, and in the middle of the accident, there was really never any record as to whether or not the uranium was actually put inside of those pools at Chernobyl. So uh, a team was asked to come in to find out what was actually inside the pools. Now you can say, can they send somebody in there? Well, apparently not. Apparently they had to go down this uh, very deep, like 80 foot uh, tall reactor in order to get into that area. And they couldn't really do it with uh, a human. And not to mention, I'm sure the, the, the possible exposure in there. So uh, a Swiss company called Flyability, they flew a drone called the Ilios 2 and they were able to get inside of the area. And the, this drone is designed, it has a cage around it and it's designed to fly into very confined areas and they were able to find out that well there's actually nothing inside of those pools which was the good news I'm sure that's what they were expecting uh, if you read the article it's actually interesting they talk about the fact that 
they had to fly over this very tall, uh, 230 foot tall wall in order to get to the area. And they mentioned that if they lost connection there, then they would have not been able to recover the drone. The drone would have not been able to come back. I'm not sure the detail as to why uh, some drones, as you know, like the DJI drones, for example, they have the, the ability to return to home. I don't know if this drone is just not equipped with that kind of stuff, but um, I thought that was interesting. So. There is no depleted uranium in uh, in those pools, which is uh, which is good news, I guess. And another drones for good news is uh, there was a crash in Kentucky on the bridge. Apparently, uh, two semi collided, and there was a lot of uh, a big fire that created a lot of damage to a bridge. So they shut down the bridge, and uh, the inspectors were not really able to go to the site to do the inspection of the steel and the concrete. So they used drones to do this. So they sent a bunch of drones flying around and collecting data that helped the inspectors uh, look at the damage and then make a decision on how to actually fix the bridge. So I thought that was a cool story, uh, something that, you you know, day to day, uh, every, it happens, I'm sure, all the time doing bridge inspections. Uh, I actually talked about this a couple weeks ago, but it's always good to see drones being used for something good uh, in the news, other than, well, anyway, <laughs> I'm not gonna get back. Okay, the last thing I wanna talk about is some uh, Pilot Institute news. Uh, we have our Black Friday sale that's going on right now, so if you're looking to uh, get your courses, if you're not certificated yet for uh, as a remote pilot, and we have a ton of other courses as well, but uh, our part one Seven Made Easy is our big bestseller. Uh, 13 hours of content. You know all the stuff. We uh, I go into a lot of details. This is the most detailed Part 107 course that you'll find online. And uh, it comes with a free course to help you fly the drone as well on top of it. Uh, if you want to fly airplanes, we have courses for that as well. Uh, we have courses to help you build your own drone. If you're looking to build an FPV drone, uh, we have Don Eon, who's uh, our amazing, uh, we call him the drone, drone doctor. He, uh, he builds drones and he tells you how to build a drone and how to do this right so you have something that flies smoothly. So uh, we have a drone flying 101 if you don't want to fly for uh, as a remote pilot but you want to fly as a, uh, as a recreational flyer. I go over all the regulation and all the things that you should do to fly safely. So that's kind of the, the catalog that we have of, uh, of courses that are available. Um, also, a really cool thing that we released this week to our students is a 3D interactive model to learn the airspace. So we took a section of a, of a sectional chart and then we have you kind of play around and, and click on different areas to find out what the airspace is. This is a way to test your knowledge, but this is also a way to kind of visualize the airspace in 3D. We do this in the course. We have a 3D model that I move around and I kind of show you, but here you actually have the ability to play with it. So I'm really excited about this. This, uh, this took uh, a little while to get uh, designed correctly and, and looking great, but I think this is very unique. Uh, I haven't seen anybody else doing this and allowing people to actually play around with a 3D airspace. So um, that's really cool. The next thing that we have is Sweaters, hoodies, whatever you want to call it. It's getting cold outside and I can tell you this is the smoothest and softest uh, hoodie. We just get those in the store so you can find a link down here if you want them. Uh, if you want to gift them to whoever you like, they're super comfortable and actually pretty warm. So uh, I know I'm going to be using mine when I go fly and it's getting colder outside. So uh, this is it. This is all I have for this week. Um, as always, subscribe, leave your comments. And then uh, there's more videos coming out. We have actually the uh, Mini 2. I'm trying to get all these, these, <laughs> these words, these names correctly. The, the DJI Mini 2. We have a deep dive course that's right around the corner. So we'll be releasing that very soon. So if you bought a Mini 2 and you want to learn how to use it, uh, this will be, will be available for free. We make these courses available for free. So, all right, that's all I have. Have a great weekend and uh, I will see you guys next week. Mm -hmm.